It may look like leaves, but it tastes like lemon and hummus. It has been shown time and time again in studies that eating carbohydrates. Oh, a lot of people also replied to my story saying like, does butter have less calories than coconut oil? And I was... Good morning guys, so today, hey Rio, good morning guys, today I thought I would do another what I eat in a day just because I wanted to share some more meal inspiration, like healthy recipes and ideas. I also wanted to share some of the stuff I've been learning from my course at uni. We've been studying nutrition and training adaptations and how, you know, your nutrition affects your training. So I thought that would be interesting to kind of incorporate into this video, some little facts and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited to film that today. So it is 10 o'clock and I'm so hungry, so I'm going to make myself some breakfast now. On Wednesdays, I have a lecture from 8 to 10. And this is the only day of the week like I won't just like get up and have breakfast. I will like just get up and just go to the lecture. I don't want to like get up earlier than that. Yes. Yeah. So it is a Wednesday. Wednesdays I just have lots of classes, online uni classes. And then in the Arvo we have our hard session of the week or one of our hardest sessions of the week at training. Sadly today it's the first like rainy and like cloudy day in a while. And don't get me wrong, I love, love a good like trackies rainy weather day but i'm just not vibing it right now because i've been loving the warm up spring weather and training training just sucks when it's raining i just prefer it when it's warm so anyway i'm hungry i need to go make myself breaky oh yeah and i always have a tea when i do these lectures because like yeah i had the gmc sencha green tea from t2 which is my favorite green tea okay i'm gonna shut up and make breaky So it's no surprise that I love my oatmeal, so I thought I would share how I've been making it lately. I've been stove cooking my oats, so I start by bringing hot water to the boil, and then I add in about half a cup of oats. I either use just roll oats or quick oats, either works. And then sometimes I'll also mash half of a banana and mix it through. Oats are super nutritious and full of fiber, and so many studies have shown that increasing your cereal fiber intake is correlated with the reduction of coronary death risk. And most of these studies were done conducted with oats. So because I'm stove cooking my oats, it does take a while, but I continue to stir it regularly as it bubbles up. I also add a teaspoon of maca powder and a teaspoon of cinnamon, and I just continue stirring because if you stop stirring, it kind of just bubbles everywhere and it can overflow. I also like to add a little bit of protein powder. So this is one of the proteins I like, but you can use whichever you like. And then I just continue to stir. It takes about 15 minutes or so. And I also just let it sit and bubble until it's a consistency that I like it. Once it's the consistency that I like, I just serve it into a bowl and top it with whatever I like. I love fresh fruit, a little bit of nut butter is lovely, and chia seeds, that's my usual go-to.
Latif. This is actually, it's actually a vibe, this weather. Like, this is oatmeal weather. And like, yeah. Like, even though I'm like mad about it because I just didn't want to train in the rain today, it's like, it's mood. Having long nails, there's chia seeds in like every single nail right now. And there will be for like three weeks. There you go. This texture is what I'm here for. Like that texture. Yum! I know that oats is a little bit of like a basic brekkie, like, but you can't go wrong with oats. It's like so nutritious and delicious. I think it's like possibly my favorite food, like ever. Now it's gonna be too hot. Okay, I'm gonna go eat this now and I will see you at lunchtime, I guess. Okay, so it's not lunchtime yet, but I'm back. I thought I would add my first fact, even though it's not really like a nutritional fact, but it's got to do with physical activity and all that type of thing. So, so I have about 45 minutes before my next class and between my classes, I do like to like go for a walk and I've been loving listening to a podcast. Going for a walk is a really nice way to break up all the sitting down and studying. So obviously being sedentary or not physically active is not great for your health and it increases your risk of chronic disease if you don't meet physical activity guidelines. Obviously that's not me, like I meet physical activity guidelines from training. So like every day I will reach my step goal or like over 10,000 steps. But it's not like spread out throughout the day, it will be from that training session in the afternoon. Something I'm like a culprit of, I guess you could say, is doing like a hardcore training session in the morning or the night and then not doing anything for the rest of the day. Or like, not not doing anything, but like being sitting down for the rest of the day. In a paper by the American College of Sports Medicine, they do explain the detrimental effects of sedentary behavior. But they do also state that even if you are physically active and meet like the guidelines, if you do spend long periods of sedentary behavior, like sitting down, it can be detrimental to your health. There's a lot of biomarkers that improve with just being more active and less sedentary, even if you meet your physical guidelines anyway, it's still better for your health to be getting up and moving or even just standing between long periods of sitting down. Yeah, I'm trying to just like make sure I get up more often because I can literally just sit all day. And then you also feel less dead when it gets to the afternoon to training. You're not just like, oh, I've literally been sitting all day, I'm dead. You're kind of just like more fresh. So anyway, I'm gonna go for my walk before my next class. Later. So I just finished my online classes for the day and before I make my lunch I thought I would just share some of the interesting information or ideas that we've been learning especially because the lecture that I just finished was a nutrition lecture. It was all about protective health factors for chronic diseases and we talked a lot, a lot about different sources of fatty acids and omega-3s and lots of things so I thought I would just share a couple of interesting things because well, actually, yesterday I posted on my Instagram story a, a graph that was shown in one of our nutrition lectures showing the saturated fat content of different fats and like oils. And basically I put it up because it showed that coconut oil was one of the oil's highest in saturated fats there is. And I know that it's like really promoted as a health food product. I don't know who decided that it was healthy. But basically I was trying to say like, guys, just because your favorite health influencer might really advocate coconut oil doesn't mean it's good for you or that they even know if it's good for you. So without going into like the chemical structure and stuff because that's what determines whether a fat's like saturated or unsaturated, but saturated fats are the kind of fats that we try to avoid because they're the ones that lead to chronic diseases. However, all the research that we do look at does say like we need more evidence. It is a relatively new oil that's being promoted and maybe there are some benefits. People argue that it might be different to other saturated fats. However, from the current research and knowledge out there, it is a saturated fat. So I had so many people reply to that being like, what the hell? Or some people saying, but it might be good, which it might be. That's just like not very known right now. Another thing people were replying was, oh, is canola oil the healthiest? Because it had the least saturated fat. And I said, no, like saturated fat content isn't the like defining factor of health. There's so many other things to take into account. That was just a table showing a graph. That was just a graph showing the content of saturated fat, but there's so many other things that go into the health content of an oil or a fat. Basically, what I was just showing by posting that was coconut oil. It is unknown if there are actually benefits from it, but what we do know is that it is very high in saturated fats, which is the kind of fat that we try to avoid. There's not one like oil that's the healthiest. Like all different foods have different things to offer and different benefits from it. But one of the more well-established and well-researched oils that has been proven to be 
very healthy is extra virgin olive oil. That's the type of oil that I choose to use. It has been shown to have a lot of benefits and it is high in antioxidants. So that's one of the kind of established and researched fats that are healthy for you. Oh, a lot of people also replied to my story saying like, does butter have less calories than coconut oil? And I was, no. They're the same macronutrient, being a fat. All fats have the same energy density, AKA calories. All fats have nine calories, or kcal, per gram. So 10 grams of both of those foods will give you 90 calories. All fats have the same amount of calories, but they're made up of different types of fats, like polyunsaturated or saturated or all of that jazz. Anyway, in the class that I just finished, we were looking at the protective benefits of the Mediterranean diet and the protective benefits of long chain omega-3 fatty acids. So those type of fatty acids are found predominantly in fish, like salmon. And yeah, there was just a lot of benefits in reducing the risk of chronic disease in people that consumed fish. Like for example, there was a study in the Blue Mountains, like over a cohort study over decades. And those people that had fish regularly in their diet had a greater reduction in disease when they got older. So sorry for rambling on, because I know you're here to see what I eat for lunch and not me talking. So I'm gonna go and make lunch. <laughs> Just for reference for how big this is. <laughs> it may look like leaves, but it tastes like lemon and hummus. Also, it really helps me if you like my video. So like if you like hummus. Dislike if you don't like hummus. This is such a solid and like yummy and like micronutrient dense lunch. If you are vegan or vegetarian, you don't need to add tuna. You could literally just not have it with tuna because of all the beans. Or you could add something like tofu or something like that. I love adding tofu to this. We don't have any tofu at home right now, sadly, but I probably do it on the weekend with tofu. Also avocado. I've been using hummus because we don't have any avocado right now. I don't know, are you team avo or hummus? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Cause I would have said team Abo. But now I think about it, like, hummus is really good. Nah, I'm team Abo though, I reckon. That's a big call, but. For a pre-training afternoon snack, I've been loving having a banana smoothie. So basically I just blend a banana with almond milk and protein powder. I've been loving using the vanilla protein powder that I had with my breakfast, but I actually ordered myself a sample pack of Macro Mike protein because I'm really interested to try some of these flavors. I will say the two flavors that I tried so far, I was kind of disappointed in. The one that I'm most excited to try was the peanut butter, the original peanut butter flavor. So that's the reason I got this in the first place but I thought I'd get the sample pack to taste them all in case it's not worth it. So here goes trying the original peanut butter flavor. It doesn't really smell too promising. Oh, it's predominantly pea protein. It's pea protein and brown rice protein. Okay, let's see how this 
Peanut butter protein is, ooh, it's creamy. I don't rate it. Damn, that was expensive as well. Protein powder is so expensive. Wow, no, that doesn't do it for me. That Honestly, that just tastes like the same as all of the others. Like it doesn't taste bad, it just doesn't taste good, you know? Sorry, I'm sorry for being a hater. Like I do like their protein bars better than their protein powders. I've never actually tried their protein powders, but Till I got this sample pack, but so far I've been wildly disappointed. Anyway, while we're here, I have some more fun facts. <laughs> so I like to have a snack before training because we train till like 7.30 and I'm gonna get super hungry if I don't eat and I need fuel for training, and I need carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are so important for athletes. They're important for everybody, I've said this before, but for athletes, it is super important to have a good carbohydrate before performing, whether that's training or competing, to fuel you and fuel your body. It has been shown time and time again in studies that eating carbohydrates helps you perform. Athletes who are on high carbohydrate diets, not even, athletes that just had carbohydrate before performing, we're able to reach a higher power output and maintain that for longer. So basically, if you're sprinting, you're able to sprint faster for longer or just train at a higher intensity for longer. So one of the studies we looked at was a 2017 study on elite race walkers and they basically had a group having a high carbohydrate diet and then a group on a keto, low carb, high fat diet. And basically they found that the group on the low carb diet, the keto diet, although they did become more fat adapted, so their body used more fat as fuel. Ultimately, their performance declined and they weren't able to maintain as high of a power output as those on the high carb diet. The low carb diet didn't increase their performance, it basically increased the oxygen cost of their performance. So basically it was harder to do the same work. So basically in simple terms, food is fuel and carbohydrates are essential. And honestly, from my own personal experience of suffering with disordered eating and not eating enough and training hungry, training under fueled. When I didn't have, when if I didn't eat a good carbohydrate snack before training or before a comp, then I would feel so shitty at training. I'd feel lethargic, I'd feel tired and I just would feel sad and, and I wouldn't want to be there, which that just sucks because I love training. It's a fun time and you want to run well, you know, so. This is so ugly, but so yum.
So it's pretty late, so I'm just having a small snack because I usually have a snack after dinner. I wasn't that hungry today and it was pretty late, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna have one because honestly, I wake up in the night hungry a lot of the time if I don't. Often I need more energy than I've had throughout the day, so I like to have a snack at night to make sure I'm getting enough energy. So I opened my pack of snackables. I got a few of these for my birthday from friends, so I finally opened a pack. But these are my favorite flavor of snackables. It's the peanut and cacao flavor. And the ingredients are literally dates, peanuts, cacao powder, desiccated coconut, and sea salt. So I just have two of these bliss balls and some strawberries. And then I was also just eating some peanuts. Then I also just made like a healthy hot chalk with this cacao latte powder, which I actually got in one of my first goodness me boxes ages ago and I use it quite often. It's 80% cacao and then it also has a little bit of coconut milk powder and stevia. And then I just put a little bit of almond milk with that, so yeah. So good. I haven't had one of these in so long, but they're so good. Okay, they're not as good as my bliss balls, but they're super chocolatey, so I love it. I'm gonna end this video here. Sorry that I look like a mess right now. It's just really late and I'm just not, I'm just putting in zero effort to look presentable, so sorry. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the educational bits, the little bits of research and info that I included. I'm kind of passionate about learning about, just learning, but about nutrition and health and the body, so. I hope that was informative and interesting. Um, I hope it wasn't boring as well, but let me know if you did like that and if you learned something. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.